Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Well, hello, hello. I'm Nadine Blaney here with Danny AQA to take you through, well, the day that wasn't really. That was a bit of a fizzle to start this week. We've erased half of last week's gains. I know. It is a bit of a fizzle, but hey, it looks like we've come off the bottom. So uh, if we have a look at the local market there, the SIBO 200, off by just, uh, well, just over nine tenths of cent or almost 14 points. And the ASX 200, pretty similar, off by about 70, 76 points and, uh, or just over about a yeah. 1%. Mm. Yep. So, yeah, it was a bit of a fizzler, but it wasn't everywhere, Nadine. No. It was and a sporadic fizzler. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Although at one point the market map was pretty dismal. I like your sense of optimism, though. I'm usually accused of being <laughs> the one that always has a silver lining because. There's no getting around it. Stocks did stink, sink, stink, sink, whatever you want to say, uh, considering that record-breaking finish on Wall Street on Friday for the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, and that's even despite that bumper jobs report. You know, really getting people thinking yet again about uh, you know the rate cut cycle coming through with the FOMC, but um, the miners were a real source of pain today. Yeah, it really was um, focused in the, the mining sector and that was really, really brutal. Um, energy was off by a percent, but it was in materials, yeah. off by about 2.6%, with the major miners all off by over 2%. And that iron ore price has been a bit weak in the D. It has, so well, certainly this was carrying on from copper falling, iron ore falling, gold falling on Friday. Uh, today we saw a little bit of um, buying in oil. Uh, iron ore traded sideways, but yeah, BHP and Rio really having a tough go at it, of it. Um, and of course, sort of really looming large over the whole psyche of investors here yeah. is our little date with rates tomorrow. <laughs> I know, I but the love meeting <laughs> got underway today. Exactly. So we now have this whole new schedule, don't we? Yeah. Eight meetings a year. And of course, it's going to be the big press conference at 3.30 tomorrow. So yeah, it really is the whole year, isn't it, Nadine? It's about these interest rates. And let's face it, there's lots of forecasts out there. But you know, banks, central banks are going to be data dependent. Even though they keep telling us that. So let's see if we get any hints coming from the RBA as to what data they're prioritizing. I mean, we now know that the Fed is really going to be keeping a close eye on the jobs data. And that was even before, you know, that bumper report that came through on Friday. Jay Powell, he was speaking on 60 mm. Minutes in the United States. I'm just saying that the bar is pretty high for cuts. But again, that was pre U.S. jobs report. So that interview, yeah. interestingly, was recorded on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. So you can find some of those big quotes out there coming from the U.S. Fed chair. One of the conversations I really enjoyed today, which is online now, was with Tano Pelosi from Antares Capital, just giving us sort of asset allocation in light of what he's expecting coming from the central banks. And he said, mm -hmm. like, you cannot, as an equity investor, he's a fixed income guy, but you just cannot ignore what's happening in bond markets and what's likely to happen in bond totally, markets. Totally, because if we actually, Warren Hogan made the same point, is like, you know, if we do see inflation starting to rear its ugly head and central banks have to backtrack, well, that would be quite nasty. But nevertheless, we're not at that stage yet. So let's have a look at some of the sectors and see how they perform today. And there is that, uh, well, that that sinking feeling across gold or stocks. Or stinking feeling, whatever, <laughs> stinking feeling. whatever you want to say. Uh, gold stocks were really heavily hit as well. I've got Northern uh, Newmont off by over 4.6%. Northern Star we can see there under pressure as well as the big miners. Okay, energy. Let's take a look here. Woodside, Santos, you can see right across the spectrum, but in particular with those coal stocks really getting hit hard. Whitehaven is off by 3%. Is there, is there a sector that performed today? Well, if you had to guess, you'd think it would be some of those more defensive areas I of think the market. healthcare was in a good um, good stage earlier on today when I had a look. That That's was the actually... only positive sector. So 10 out of 11 sectors have pushed lower and that even includes those utilities so yeah. down by well, 1.4%. They're, they're very interest rate sensitive as well. Lots of you know people 
yeah. sort of clobbering them around. Maybe you should get into some of the top stories because uh, m and activity continues to abound and Metcash has snapped up three businesses with a total value of around $560 million as they look to diversify and they're bought into a private food services provider, Superior Food Group, a construction company, as well as one called Frame and Trust Operator Alpine Trust. Yeah, and credit where credit is due. There's a really interesting article in the Fin today just on Metcash and the strategy uh, that's behind some of these purchases that it's made so far. Um, Pro Medical, uh, Pro Medicus, I should say, fascinated with this one because it's created an app for Apple Vision. Yeah. And um, just on the basis of that, share price popping by 4%. It's uh, looking pretty close to $110 there. Really fascinating just to see. Uh, yeah, the impact that this Vision Pro is having just on, you know, across social media, just seeing mm. how behavior might be impacted, you know, positively or negatively. Fascinating. Mm, absolutely. And I just spoke with Sam Hubert on that. So the interview will be up online, but very embryonic. But nevertheless, the 3D spatial awareness works very well with their software. And there was a broker upgrade to $120 a share Not on ProMedicus. Not bad. Mm. Um, Linus confirms that confidential talks with MP Materials, which is an American company, has come to an end still though. Uh, you know, shares down by two and a quarter percent in Appen. Yes, Appen, poor old Appen, it just lurches from bad to worse. And so basically the old CEO has been replaced. Uh, Mr. Armageddon Ahmed has been replaced now by Kevin Perkins. And that stock down to 27 yeah. cents. God, that he's is... got a big job. <laughs> yeah, um, and does. he's actually an insider from the company as well. So some, some analysis that I've read questioning the wisdom of getting somebody who actually oversaw some of its acquisitions. It didn't turn out so well um, taking over, but uh, yeah, only time will tell. And Dexas Convenient Retail REITs so are one of the first companies to report. Absolutely, and I just spoke with the CEO earlier on. It's a really lovely story, this one, and relatively defensive. It's one of those REITs that got thrown out with the baby in the bathwater when interest rates went up. But it's on a, well, they've reaffirmed their distribution guidance between 20 spot 8 to 21 cents per share for full year 24. And it basically equates to an 8% yield with a very strong balance sheet. All right, so that's what we've been sort of watching. And I should mention some of the best performers being John Ling's group, really yep. getting its feet into that US strategy. And Wise Tech Global, one of the best performers in tech. On that note, why not bring in Josh Gilbert to the COB? He's joining us from eToro. Hey, Josh, welcome. Boy, sometimes, um, you know, we, we need to be consoled because we don't have a tech um, you know, tech giants like that in the US, right? Today was that day with materials, you know, just doing so terribly. Yeah, every now and again, it would be nice to have a meta just flying 20% yeah. and taking the whole market with it. Um, but no, yeah, look, I think there is reason to be positive. I think, look, we're, we're coming off of the back of what was, you know, record highs last week. We've had a pretty decent run from the local market, all in all, uh, two strong weeks of gains. Um, as you say, materials sort of really, being a bit of a pull on the market today, you know, that lithium sector just really can't catch a bit at the moment. Um, you know, I think that's getting to the point where it just feels like it's maybe getting to that sort of part of the sell off, which is is overshooting. Um, but I think for now that might continue. But I think at some point that's going to see a turnaround at, at sort of some point this year. And obviously, as you say, that jobs report um, in the US on, on Friday obviously didn't help as well, sort of, you know, dampening rate cut expectations at the same time. So, yeah, not sort of really giving us much of a good lead coming into today. Josh, we did start earnings season um, here in Australia today. And I was just noting um, in a piece you wrote, we're only looking for 3.4% growth in earnings for the Aussie market. So not looking hugely robust, but of course it will be, I suppose, depending very much on the company and the sector. What do you think investors will be looking for? Margin improvements, cost reductions? What are some of the key aspects? I think so. I think that's cost control and margins, I think, are going to be a big trend. We, I think we're starting to already see that shine through on Wall Street. It's sort of really been what has helped lead those sort of mega cap names such as Meta, such as Amazon. They were the ones that sort of cut costs early. They're reaping the rewards now, um, you know, really helping bottom lines whilst driving sales, which is obviously helping margins as well. Um, you know, we've obviously had inflation that's continued to ease. Uh, that's 
obviously continue to ease within that sort of first half of the fiscal year as well. So that should help companies as well. So I think that is going to be a, a real focal point for investors. I think China's economy as well, you know, that's still not playing ball. <clears throat> so we're really going to need to sort of have some update there as well from the broader material sector, because I think we could maybe see dividends coming under a little bit of pressure also if, you know, we're still not sort of seeing that demand for the likes of the lithium miners. If we're seeing the big names such as BHP, Fortescue, you know, putting out um, concerns about China's economy when, you know, we're seeing their stock market again struggling today. And we've obviously got China CPI. Uh, again on on Thursday this week, but uh, yeah, I think that the big focus here is going to be margins and cost control, and whoever has, I think, had the best cost control over the last sort of six months, I think they're going to be the ones that we see reap the rewards the the best this coming reporting season. Hey, Josh, on the platform, where are you seeing the most buying? I mean, I think of some of these key <laughs> themes. You know, uranium continually comes up. It was the focal point of the trade today. Um, where are you seeing enthusiasm from your clients? Uh, interestingly enough, it, it still st is still sort of staying with crypto if we want to sort of speak more broadly mm -hmm. in terms of asset classes. I think crypto is, is an asset obviously is coming off the back of a great year. We had a huge anticipation in the run up to obviously the ETFs. You know, we've seen maybe the market trade a little bit sideways since that sort of decision. Um, you know, that you know, sort of sell the news type of event when, when we sort of had it really come through. You know, it wasn't that sort of instant reaction that uh, I think maybe retail investors were, were expecting. Uh, but there is a huge interest in our sort of um, retail investor survey that we do sort of every quarter here showed us in Q4 that crypto was the asset class they were focusing on. Stock specific, um, still not giving up on tech, which has been really interesting. I think investors haven't been willing to sort of give up on the winners from last year. We do expect to sort of see that rotation into those sort of cheaper assets, those sort of assets that were unloved in 2023, you know, healthcare, real estate, um, those types of asset classes, we are beginning to, to sort of see that rotation. Um, but the key theme is that they're just not giving up on tech. And I think that they're being rewarded for that as well, given the results that we sort of saw uh, last week from the likes of Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, and, and no wonder as well, really, given the sort of the trend that we're continuing to, to sort of see from AI. And you've obviously got this tailwind of rate cuts, um, you know, on the way as well, which is only going to be a boost uh, for tech stocks. Uh, and of course, that sort of rotation trade that I was talking about uh, as well. So really, crypto is that heavy focus. Tech is still prominent, but we are gradually starting to see investors move into some of those cheaper assets as well. Fantastic, Josh. Well, interesting times ahead, I am thinking. It's going to be, yet again, an interesting year. Thank you so much for joining us. See you, Josh. My pleasure, guys. See you. All right, we've talked about some of those big corporate stories, Danny, but let's get across what actually was in the figures. And of course, this is by percentage change. I think that's always worthwhile pointing out because it's not market cap, obviously. Um, but John Sling Group, so yes, it has um, strengthened its US strategy, yeah. launching a customer collect, connect, I should say, claims management platform. So it's been named to Allstate's Emergency Response and Mitigation Panel. So Allstate's a big insurer there. Yeah, and Primedicus, we've talked about that as well, up over 4%. WiseTech also in focus, might have been a, a broker upgrade on that one. Net Wealth and Helios also up by over 2%. Yeah, just to answer the question on uh, WiseTech, it was Morgan Stanley saying that shares could swing wildly if it changes its annual guidance. Don't forget its first half results, like many, coming up this month. So, mm. um, look, it's got an overweight rating and an $85 price target on the stock. Yeah, so. a lot to do with uh, how the new acquisitions are embedding and what happens with margins oh, on the new that acquisitions. One. Yeah, yeah, the perennial acquirer. All right, um, on the flip side though, Silver Lake Resources. So it has made a play uh, when it comes to Red 5. So they plan to merge. Oh, well, I'm not sure where those are coming from, but no, we'll roll they... with it. Silver Lake and Liontown were actually the worst performers <laughs> on the 200 today. Um, Fletcher Building as well, some provisioning coming through for Fletcher Building. Absolutely, and it looks like some profit taking in Life of 360 off by about a 2.5%. Maybe we should have a look at some of the small caps and see what <laughs> they are after. Oh my gosh, Bougainville Copper, my golly goshkins. I don't even think that asset's operating. Apparently that's up 54% today. 4D Memory up 20% and uh, the likes of uh, Opthea and Paragon and Frontier all up Ooh. by over 7%. 
interesting. Thea and Paragon both in that sort of biotech space. Yeah. Flipping the page though, let's see what's lagging. And I was going to say, I dare say, it have to do with resources. Oh, gold as well. Yeah. Gal and lithium down by 11%. So yeah, there you go. A bit of a read on sentiment out there towards some of those resources plays, particularly in that small end of the market. Absolutely. Now let's check in with the stock of the day, which was a Dexas Convenience a Retail Reit. And David Lane from Ord Manette and Kay Chen from MPC Markets shared their verdict on the call. I still think that there's value in the business. We've got an accumulate on it. Uh, and I don't see that today's uh, announcement will, will change our, our view, um, particularly uh, or in any. Uh, so I think that, uh, yeah, if you're looking for a, a fairly good um, REIT that has a good yield, a uh, yield of about 7.5%, 8%, mm. uh, I think that it's a, it's a good one to put into the okay. portfolio. Um, we, we prefer probably Goodman Group. I right. think Goodman would be the preferred pick for us. Okay. Okay, maybe we should check in and what's happening overnight and see if we have much going on. We've got the USI, US ISM and S&P Global Services Indices and earnings. We have Caterpillar, Estee Lauder and the likes of McDonald's coming out. So yeah. it continues to be, let's say, maybe not a big tech earnings week, but still lots of big important US stocks reporting well, this week. That US ISM will be particularly important as well because we get employment gauges, we get price gauges in there and we've also got the fed chair jay powell speaking again yes. i think it's to cbs i wonder if it's live i actually don't know that because we want to get a reaction to that data that came through on friday that jobs report that came in so strong and don't forget as well with caterpillar we will have that local read through to seven group which is the exclusive distributor of caterpillar um here and around the region and uh I think that's um, Tyson Foods. I was going to say Ford is later on in the week. I know we've got a couple of the car manufacturers yeah, and, coming up. Yeah, and the likes of the mighty Eli Lilly is out on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, now of course, big day tomorrow, Nadine. <gasps> Ooh, I can't wait, 2.30. <laughs> We're going to get the official statement. Nothing's changing there. But then, well, we don't get the statement on monetary policy. That doesn't come till later. Uh, it's actually the media conference yep. with Michelle Bullock, the governor that happens at 3.30 p.m. We're going to actually bring you some of that live here on Ausbiz. If you're interested in listening in, I mean, well, I'll think it'd be interesting what kind of, um, kind of statements that she's making, how it's sort of handled, any Q&A, all the rest of it. Um, yeah, a new era for the RBA. Absolutely, and also Q4 retail volumes out, Euro retail sales later on, and earnings reports, Amcor, Setire, and uh, Virgin Money coming out as well. So we're going to see more and more of those corporate earnings. All right, let's get the final figures, shall we? So we know that the curtains already come down on the SIBO Australia Index. So that was off by about nine tenths of 1%. Materials being the biggest weight. Final figure though, Danny, yeah, for the uh, S&P? Yep, so the uh, S &P two, ASX S&P 200 off 73 points or about 0.95%. So uh, yeah, let's face it, it was a little bit worse than what the futures uh, said, but it did improve over the course of the day. Interesting, I'm just on the ASX website saying over the last five days, the index has gained nine tenths of a percent. I mean, we started today yeah, mm. with about a 2% gain over the last week, um, but saying it's virtually unchanged over the last year to mm. date. So, I mean, that's always the perspective to keep in mind. Of course, that's ex-dividends, uh, but if you're just looking at uh, the number, um, that's where we're at to end Absolutely. this Monday. Absolutely. Well, that's it for us today. Have a great evening and we'll catch you 10 o'clock, 9.45. We'll see you then. You can catch up with everything online, ausbiz.com.au. We'll see you tomorrow. See you then.